Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today we learn. Today we will learn how to compare fractions. How to compare fractions in a hurry. For example, let's start out with something very simple, very straightforward. So simple, so straightforward. In fact that we won't have to do anything, we will know the answer right away. Let's compare, let's compare, let's find out which one is bigger, two-third or three-quarter. Of course, this is very simple, but in the exam, you won't come up, with, you won't come across a simple scenario like this where you have to compare two-third and four, uh, three-quarters. Three the fractions are going to be a little bit more complicated, which we'll come to in a second. We, we just first want to learn the method, we just first want to learn the theory behind it as to how to go about doing it by doing a simple one. We already know the answer is 3 quarter. But let's see what we can do here. When we are comparing fractions, our job is to simply get rid of this bottom part, the denominator, as quickly as possible. If there is no denominator, then we are essentially comparing two numbers, which is very simple. Question is, how do we get rid of this 3 from the bottom? Well, it's very simple. If you want to get rid of the 3 from the bottom, multiply this fraction by 3 so that the 3 goes away. But you can't simply multiply this fraction by 3 because if you're comparing them, whatever you do to this fraction, you must do the same thing to that fraction. Which means, we must multiply this fraction by 3. 3 from here is gone. Well, what happened to that 3? Well, that 3 appeared here. That 3 right here from the bottom ended up on the top there. Right here. How do we have to get it to the 4 from the bottom as well? Well, how do we do that? Well, let's multiply both fractions by 4. Let's multiply both fractions by 4. And when we do that, this fraction from the bottom is going to disappear here. It's going to disappear from the bottom right hand side and it's going to add, 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 reappear on the top left hand side. And this 4 cancels out with that 4. That's it. It's gone. This 4, that 4 here took out that 4. That's it. We are done. Essentially, the 4 from the bottom on the, on, the, on the right hand side appears on the top on the left hand side. And 3 from the bottom on the right hand side, or left hand side rather, appears on the top on the right hand side. That's it. We are done. We're comparing now 4 times 2, which is 8, versus 3 times 3, which is 9. And of course, we know 9 is more than 3, which we knew all along, because 3 quarter we knew, 3 quarter we knew was more than 2 third. So since 9 is more than 8, which means 3 quarter must have been more than 3, 2 third. Let's do one more. This time you do it yourself. Pause the video and do it yourself right away. 3 7 versus 4 9. 3 7 versus 4 9. Same exact theory, nothing has changed. Let's multiply both fractions by 7. When you multiply both fractions by 7, the 7 disappears from here. Let's multiply both fractions by 9. When you multiply both fractions by 9, 9 disappears from here, and that's it, we are done. We end up with 3 times 9, which is 27. And here we end up 2 times 7, which is 2, or rather 4 times 7, 4 7 is 28, and 28 is more than 27. Therefore, therefore this fraction, 4 9th, is more than 3 7. That's all. We are done. If you don't want to do the intermediate, pro, intermediate step, what, what is going on here is this 3 7 and 4 9. You take the 7 multiplied by, you take the 7 multiplied by 4, you end up with 4 times 7, just like here, 4 times 7. And then you take your 9 and take it to the top, 3 times 9, 3 times 9 ends up 27 is less than 28, therefore this guy is bigger. This is, if you want to do it like this, this is fine, this is, this is, this is, of course it's going to save you a couple of seconds, but you must realize that what's going on in this bottom part here, bottom scenario here, what's going on behind the curtain is what you see on the top here. This is what's going on behind the curtain, essentially you're multiplying both, essentially you're multiplying not just this, fraction by 9, but you're multiplying both fractions by 9, that's how we get rid of the 9 here, and then you multiply both fractions by 7, and you get rid of 7 from here, and that 7 disappears from here, and ends up on the top there. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. How about 93 over 4 versus 24? See what you can do? But whenever questions like this appear on the exam, whether you're taking the SAT or SAT or TEs or GMAT or GRE, 
Whenever a question of this nature appears on the exam, you must realize that the purpose of this, uh, these questions is not to see how fast you can do your division or how fast you can do your multiplication or how fast you are at using the bloody calculator. That is not the point. They are trying to see something else. They are trying to see some other thinking process behind it. If you went through the traditional method of doing it out physically, manually, you are missing the bloody point. That wasn't the point. Let's do it together. Well, this 24 is essentially 24 over 1. Nothing has changed. Let's multiply both columns by, by 4, and if you do that, the 4 drops out. We are essentially comparing 93 versus 24 times 4. We know 25 times 4. We know 25 times 4 is 100. Is 100. We don't have 25 fours. We have 24 fours. We have 24 fours. We don't have 25 fours. You take away one four. You take away one four. You end up with 96. And 96, of course, is greater than 93. And therefore, 24 is more than 93 over four. Let's do one more. Next one. Let's do it on the top. Let's not do it. So no. Thirty-five over three versus twenty-three over two. Well, if we multiply both. If we multiply both columns, I refer to them as columns, it's easier to talk about two columns. If we multiply both columns by 3, we can knock out this 3, and that 3 ends up on the top here. If you multiply both columns by 2, if you multiply both columns by 2, this 2 disappears, and it ends up here. This 2 ends up in this column. So it's 35 times 2, 35 times 2 versus 23 times 3, versus, versus 23 times 3. 35 times 2 is 70, and 23 times 3 is going to be 69. That tells you that tells you that 35, 35 over 3 is more than 23 over 2, but it's not a hell of a lot more. It's going to be very close. These two fractions are actually very, very close to each other, but as you can see, it's 70 and 69. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Six over seven versus seven over eight. Six over seven versus seven over eight. Seven times seven is forty-nine, and six times eight. Six times uh, six times eight is six eight is a forty-eight. Forty-eight is smaller than six forty-nine. Therefore, seven over eight. Seven over eight is greater than six over seven because we found. 49 on this side. But you understand, of course, the theory behind it as to how, why are we multiplying 6 by, why are we multiplying 6 by 8? We're not multiplying 6 by 8. What we're doing is we're multiplying both fractions by 8. That's what we're doing. We're multiplying both fractions by 8 and 8 disappears. Why are we multiplying this 7 by that 7? Well, we're not multiplying just this fraction by 7. We're multiplying both columns by 7. We're multiplying both columns by 7. That 7 disappears and it reappears over here. Let's do one more. Five eight over seven eleven. Which one is bigger? And now that we know the process, it's very simple. It only takes ten seconds. Eight times seven versus five times eleven. Five elevens are fifty-five. Eight sevens. Well, seven sevens. I know seven sevens are forty-nine. 49 plus another 7, 49 plus 1 is 50, 50 plus 6 is going to be 56. 56 is more than that, therefore 7, 8 is bigger. That's it, we're done. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.